All right, welcome. Today we're going to be discussing ATG Zero, which is one of the original ATG programs. It's split up into two days, a lower body day and an upper body day. Today we're going to be covering the lower body day. Just to be clear, this isn't a form coaching video. And if you do need form coaching, you should seek out a professional either through ATG Online Coaching or one of the hundreds of ATG coaches around the world. And I'll link a few of them down in the description. This is just going to be taking you through what the ATG Zero program looks like. If you want to just skip straight to the workout, I'll leave a timestamp on the screen. For those of you that don't know what ATG Zero is, it is a foundational knees over toes style training program created by Ben Patrick and uses little to no equipment. And anyone can use it from elite athletes to people that have never formally exercised before. And if you are an athlete, this is an amazing program to get you started in that knees over toes style training. And you could easily incorporate this into your existing routine. And if you are someone who's never formally exercised, this program is more than enough to keep you busy for months to come, making gains in your knees and all of your other joints. The original design of the program would have you do the lower body day three days a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and then the upper body day two days a week, Tuesday and Thursday. This is just a guideline. It's not anything set in stone. Many people use the Zero program to warm up. Others use it as their entire routine. Some people only do it three times a week. Other people do it seven times a week. So really you can design this to fit your specific needs. All right, so the very first thing you'll do for the lower body zero program is sledding, 10 minutes of sledding. And if you don't have a sled or you're just starting out, you can simply walk backwards. As simple as it looks, walking backwards, whether it's with a sled on a turned off treadmill or just simply walking backwards, it's getting your knee over your toe with every step and is a great warm up for the rest of the routine. Personally, I don't have a sled. So what I could alternatively do is simply high rep step ups, which isn't as good as a sled, but it's still pretty good to warm up those knees before the rest of the session. But if you do have a sled or a treadmill that you can turn off and walk backwards on, 100% do those. Next up, we have 25 wall tibialis raises. These are gonna strengthen the tibialis muscle, which is essentially the decelerator of the foot and acts quite opposite to the calf. You can use a wall to get in your reps, or if you have access to a tib bar, definitely use that. And you can decrease the difficulty by getting closer to the wall and increase the difficulty by getting further away from the wall. <laughs> if you can easily hit your 25 reps, then increase the difficulty a bit. If you're struggling to even get 10 or 15, then decrease the difficulty so you can reach that 25. Next, we have 25 FHL calf raises, or put more simply, a straight leg calf raise. You wanna keep your knees completely locked out to put more emphasis on the upper portion of the calf. And if you can easily hit 25 reps with both legs, then you can switch to one leg. And if you can't hit the 25 yet, regress by getting closer to the wall so you can hit your 25 reps. You're looking to get a full stretch in the bottom position and a full contraction at the top. Next up, you'll do another 25 wall tibialis raises, or again, use a tib bar if you have access to one. Most people have relatively weak tibs, so it makes sense to hit it twice during this session. And to finish up the lower legs, we have a KOT calf raise. You can also call it a bent knee calf raise. Having your knees bent in this position is going to put a higher emphasis on the Achilles and the soleus, which is the lower portion of your calf. And just like the tibialis raises and the FHL calf raises, if you can easily hit 25 reps with both legs, then you'll switch to one leg. And for example, say you can only hit 10 of these, you would do 10 on one leg, ideally your weaker leg first, 10 on the other leg, the stronger leg, and then go back and forth. Hit five, hit five, maybe three, three, and so on and so forth until you hit your 25 per leg. Next up, we've got 25 Patrick step ups on each leg. The Patrick step is one of three core reverse step up movements. You have the Patrick, the Poliquin, and the Peterson. Patrick involves keeping your heel planted on flat ground and just lightly touching your non-working heel on the ground and getting your 25 reps. This movement puts your knee over your toe while strengthening your ankles and increasing their mobility. If you find this too difficult, you can bring your leg closer to make the movement much shorter. And if you can easily hit your 25 here, you can bring your leg further out. So you really have to dig a little deeper to get your 25 reps. The Patrick step along with the other step ups are all short range knee extension movements, which brings us to our next movement, the ATG split squat. 
which for the knee is a long range knee extension movement. For the ATG split squat, we're gonna be hitting five sets of five. Out of all the ATG movements, the ATG split squat is likely the one movement that requires the most attention to detail. So if you are unsure about your form, again, would highly recommend you find a certified ATG coach or go directly to ATG online coaching. So the ATG split squat in its full flat ground form involves you starting in this staggered stance and then pushing your front knee forward while keeping your back knee as straight as possible. You'll figure out over time how far apart you need to keep your feet and you can let your heel float or elevate it with some form of heel elevation. You wanna contract your rear glute to get an extra stretch on that front hip flexor. And ideally you want full hamstring and calf coverage on the front working leg. And again, like I said, this movement may take years to master. So if you do have the ability to hire a coach, would highly recommend it, especially for this movement. And this can be regressed with front foot elevation, puts a lot less pressure on that front knee, and you can use something like a chair, a PVC pipe, or anything else to assist you throughout the movement. And again, you'll do five sets of five on each leg, working through your pain-free range of motion. Next up, we've got elephant walks. You'll do two sets of 30 reps. And this is what a regressed version of the elephant walk will look like. Use some form of elevation for your hands. For many of you, you might need more than this. For others, you might need a lot less than this. You may already be able to touch the ground if you're relatively mobile. You'll place both hands, according so, one hand, on that flat surface and begin pulsing your knees. Over time, you'll be able to go lower. Again, pulsing your knees back and forth. And this is really gonna open up some more ability and range in your hamstrings and your lower back. And eventually, your goal is to be able to put hands flat on the ground and pulse your legs back and forth. Again, two sets of 30 reps go nice and easy. You should really feel a stretch in your hamstrings and a light stretch in your lower back. Again, never work through pain and just keep pulsing. Next up, we've got L-sits. There's loads of variations for these for the most elite level and the most regressed level. The simplest way you can begin is butt on the ground, hands on the ground, and lift one leg at a time. You'll do this for one minute. Once that becomes doable, you can lift both legs. It's difficult to do with recording. And then once that becomes doable, you can do the same thing with butt elevated. And then from there, you can do a full L sit, both legs and butt off the ground. So that's the L sit. You'll do two sets of one minute at whatever your level is that you can maintain for one minute. Lastly, we have the couch stretch. Ideally, get some kind of padding for your knee. I don't have anything right now, but definitely get something under there or else you might have some pain. And you get in this sort of split squat position with your rear foot up against the wall or a couch, and you'll hold this for two sets of one minute on each leg. You can regress it by elevating your back foot less or progress it by getting your butt closer and closer to the wall and your shin closer and closer to making full contact with the wall. Again, two sets of one minute. All right, so that is the ATG Zero lower body flow. Again, I'll be doing the upper body flow in a later video. This video is not meant to be a replacement for form coaching. If you're new to this style of training, would highly recommend seeking out a coach, like I've said a few times. If you have any questions about this ATG Zero lower body flow or anything regarding training or any of my other videos, please leave a comment down below. Also, let me know what kind of videos you'd like to see regarding training, and thanks for watching.